you can have as many passwords on your computer as possible, but the reality is, is that if you put a crazy super duper password for a login name and number whatever I could probably bypass it under five minutes because I've had to do that in fact I've had customers who have forgotten their passwords and they paid me to crack their passwords it's not that hard to do so you want to make sure that you want to keep your computer and devices out of the hands of the bad guys so again the first rule of any type of computer security safety is to restrict physical access to it because, as I said, if the bad guys get a hold of it, they can get into your information. So let's talk about using it at home. Now, if you live in an apartment, you're going to get a lot of foot traffic past your room. And one of the first rules of security is that you want to make it more difficult for the thieves than the payoff. So you want to raise the risk versus the payoff. If the risk is up here, and the payoff is down here, thieves usually just move along. But if the risk is down here, but the payoff is up here, the thieves are going to be tempted, if not break in or steal something. So the first thing you want to do is show people you have nothing to steal. And you do that by not having your valuables visible from the window. I mean, think about this for a second. Do you want to put jewelry in front of a window so everybody walking by could see what you have? No, of course not. We put it in a jewelry box. We maybe keep it in a closet. We don't put it out for public display unless you're gauche. But we do that with our computers. For example, I'm in a little office area. There's a window right behind my computer. The shades are closed usually. I'm not advertising I have a computer in this house. More importantly, I'm not advertising what type of computer I have in this house. So you want to keep it out of view of people that are walking by. If you happen to live with, let's say, roommates or you live with people that might get to your computer, think about keeping your computer in a room that you can lock. This also adds a different level of security. So for example, if somebody does break into the house, they've got to break into another room to get to your stuff. Now that might be overkill for some. Also, come Christmas time, the day after Christmas, Boxing Day, you can really find out who got what for Christmas. And you can find out whose house you want to break into because everybody puts their boxes out there on the curb. And so you can see, oh, hey, they bought a brand new TV. They got a new computer. They got a new this. They got a new that. Believe me, the bad guys are casing the streets. They are driving the streets to see who got what goodies. So consider breaking down boxes of some of the higher priced items. You don't want to advertise that you just got a new iMac. You don't want to advertise you got a brand new you know, 60 inch television, you want to keep that to yourself. Of course, if you don't like your neighbors, you can put your boxes in, in their yard. Uh, again, don't do that. I'm not responsible if you do that, although it would be funny, but don't know if that's bad. If you're going to hotels, let's say you're on the, on the go, you are traveling a lot. In fact, one of my previous jobs, I had to do a lot of traveling and training. If you remember from the beginning of the video, I used to train FBI folks and DEA guys and all that stuff. And so I lived out of a hotel for half a year or so. Rooms are open when you're in a hotel room. If you are staying the day, several days in a hotel room, the cleaning staff comes through the room. They don't close the door. They don't lock the door. Typically, they'll open several doors at a time. They have no idea who's staying in there. And so those rooms are open so people can go in there without any problem. Again, they don't know who's supposed to be in there, who's not supposed to be in there. So with a hotel room, you want to hide the computer. Again, simply hiding the computer can make a huge difference. Hiding a laptop or hiding a, a tablet computer, put it in a drawer, put it in the bureaus, put it somewhere that's not visible just to anybody. Also, there are safes in some rooms, so if the safe's big enough, you might put some devices in there. And of course, you can take it with you. There's an idea. Uh, now, when I was teaching this to the FBI folks, they thought I was, you know, over-exaggerating how easy it would be to get laptops out of a room in a hotel. <laughs> Whoops. So uh, we were over there for a weekend, and the FBI folks were, you know, out and about. They were, you know, going off on the weekend, taking taking their vacation and whatever. And so I went room to room, <laughs> and I had a collection of laptops, FBI laptops, in my room. And when they came back, I had knocks on my door. <laughs> they were like, wow, well, I'm like, see how easy it was. I tell you what, everybody started putting their laptops away after that. So the next one is the coffee shop or a library. Now, if you're a college student, pay attention. Or if you know people who are college students, tell them to watch this course. 
if nothing else than for this one particular part. People leave computers in coffee shops and in the libraries, and the bad guys know it. In fact, you'll always get warnings at major universities about thefts, thefts of books that people leave behind them to go to the bathroom, to go get coffee, whatever. These are issues. Now, if you have a laptop, look at the side. You might have a little indentation that's called a Kensington connection. It's basically like a bike chain for your laptop, and pretty much almost every laptop I've seen has this. Now, there are some that don't, but for the most part, laptops have these. You can also put laptop alarms and security cameras on your laptops. In fact, check out the additional material, and I will have links to some software that are laptop alarms as well as security cameras that you can install on your laptop so if it's stolen, you can have it report its location. I mean, there's LoJack for laptops. You also can put alarms where if the laptop is unplugged, the alarm will sound. Or if you raise the laptop or close the lid, the alarm will sound. You can also just simply ask somebody next to you to keep an eye on it. Uh, studies have shown, experiments have shown that people are much more likely to take responsibility for something if they're asked to. So you might have had somebody who was planning on stealing the laptop anyways. If you've identified them and asked them to watch it, they're actually less likely to take the laptop. And by the way, FYI, and I always ask my students this, do you know why Walmart has greeters? Do you know why if you go to Walmart, there's somebody greeting you? Do you know why when you go to Best Buy, there's somebody greeting you? Do you know why when you go to Costco, there's somebody greeting you? And the responses vary. Well, the reason why they're greeting you has nothing to do with being friendly. They're greeting you because, again, studies have shown if you greet customers, they're less likely to shoplift at that store. So there's a whole psychology behind the greeting. And finally, consider getting serial numbers. Consider keeping a copy of the serial numbers of all your high-priced electronics. It also wouldn't hurt to take pictures of these devices in case they're stolen. One, it will help authorities because you'll have to fill out a, a report. And two, you can also file it on an insurance claim. And so if you file it with the authorities, if you register a product stolen, the pawn shops get this information. So for example, let's say your house is broken into on a Saturday and somebody shows up on Sunday to the pawn shop, they can run the serial numbers and see if that device was in fact stolen. So keep track of those serial numbers. All right, that's going to conclude our section two. In section three, our next section, we're going to take a look at authentication. We're going to take a look at passwords, how to protect your computer online. We're going to talk about protecting your accounts, all that good stuff. So we'll see you in section three.